I know, I know, everybody has been salvaging away happily with their Drake Vultures, and meanwhile there hasn't been anything on this channel to showcase it. Well, that's about to change, and so for some pure gameplay of one of the most popular gameplay loops in Star Citizen right now, you're in the right place. I'm Farrister, and this video will showcase a mostly real-time perspective of salvaging with the Drake Vulture, from leaving the hangar, to finding the derelict, to stripping it and organising those delicious boxes before heading back to sell up. I say mostly real time as I've sped up parts of the trip to keep the overall video length down and those parts are clearly marked as sped up. With that said, introduction over and we'll jump into the hangar. And as those hangar doors open we make our way into the bay and see the Drake Vulture. There are two entry points onto the ship, one is at the back via the ramp in the sort of cargo deck, but I prefer to just climb up the ladder and hop straight into the cockpit from the front. For those who are a fan of industrial style ships, I think the Drake Vulture certainly delivers. It feels a bit rough and ready, it feels like a workhorse, and I quite like that. So at this point I'm just surveying the list of opportunities through the Mobiglass menu, although it's possible to go out and just find a derelict yourself. I do quite like these uh, claims, you can purchase a, a salvage claim, you know what you're getting, you know where it is, you can decide whether or not you want to take it. So in this case a Valkyrie should for the most part fill up a fair amount of cargo storage on the Vulture, which I think for this should be a good experience. As we slowly lift the Vulture out of the hangar, and then find out where we're heading to. In this case it's her L4, so I'll just set a route for the Lagrange point and then worry about getting a bit closer when we're a bit closer. Join the new clouds there on Lawville down below. Thank you. Well, I suppose the whole planet of Hurston, really. Make our jump to orbital marker six. Drive is now on. Before heading to the Lagrange point, her L4. Now, I did mention in the introduction some parts of this video are sped up, and the quantum travel is one of those parts that I thought. Probably once you've seen it once, you've seen it a hundred times. So when you do see the quantum travel going down very, very quickly, it's that times 12 speed. That's because the footage has been sped up. On that note, into this asteroid field and we we'll make our way to the salvage claim. So 116 kilometers, that's a fair distance. I'm just going to double check that it's not giving me a second quantum jump marker. It'd be nice if we could find a quicker way there, but there isn't, so we'll just continue as is. And we'll definitely speed up for this. A Vulture does have a fairly decent top speed, well over 1,100 meters per second, so when you are trying to run down the distance to a long haul claim like this, it can go at a fair pace. The only thing to bear in mind is it doesn't slow down very quickly, and I'm still getting used to perfecting at what point I should slow the engines down, so uh, bear with me if we overshoot a little bit. Interestingly here, this is one of my first times out solo salvaging, so I'm fairly new to salvage. I don't own a salvage ship myself, and so my only experience has been out salvaging with others, and that means that every salvage experience that I've had so far has been a multi-crew salvage experience, 
invariably with somebody who knows what they're doing. So for me, this opportunity to fly out in the Drake Vulture and actually try it for myself, doing everything for myself is pretty much a first time. So I think bear that in mind as you watch this gameplay. There are some very, very smart people out there who are much more practiced at this salvage gameplay loop than I am. This is, uh, this is the amateur out salvaging. And at 20 kilometers to the salvage claim, start reducing the speed, which as you can see, the braking performance on the Vulture means it's reducing very slowly. Yes, it looks like we're gonna overshoot this Valkyrie here. Not to worry, spin the ship around, apply some boosts and try and get caught up again. So engage the salvage arms and switch to the Abraid Scraper module. I find this one a little easier to use. There are different modules. They're, they're not quite like the mining modules in that they're kind of always on for the different scrapers that you've got up front. But you can see in the properties on there, you've got different characteristics for each. So diameter, speed, efficiency. I find the Abraid is probably the easiest to use. And we've already got a full cargo pod of recycled materials here. That's because actually I think I'd been out in the Vulture earlier this morning and already filled up a decent amount of the cargo pod. And here we are, living the whole munching knife style. So I've tried a few different ways with this and I find that using the mouse isn't the best way for me. I think for most people it is, but I find it quite difficult and a bit unwieldy to do it that way. It might be because of my combination of hardware and things like that. So I end up just locking the, the munchers to the front of the ship and moving the ship around. I find that's the easiest option. I think most people watching will have had some sort of salvage experience in, in Star Citizen, but broadly speaking, I'm just painting the hull with these laser beams, and you can see that that's eating away at the hull, stripping it away, and then on the top left of the heads-up display in the centre of the screen, you can see that cargo is building up to that one SCU box, and when it gets to one, it will dump out the box and then we'll go and collect it. Different parts of the ship that you're salvaging will have different amounts of materials on them. So you can see on the right vehicle hull percentage, that applies specifically to the part of the hull that is highlighted. So in there it was like the rear winglet. And you can also see on the bottom of the heads up display a kind of a yield, a percentage versus 100%, which is kind of how much you're currently getting from the salvage beam. And there we are, so that's the the one SCU box is filled up. So there's it's already dumped a box out, so we need to go and move a box. And this seems to be my preferred way of, of dealing with this, is essentially generate two boxes before you go down and move them around. So I don't go every time that a box is ready, I'll wait until a box is ejected and the next box is ready to come out. Unfortunately, you do need the tractor beam attachment for this, but I think most people tend to run that. There's the second box come out. And then, oh, I'm just gonna put that down here, I think, for sake of ease. So that's two boxes of salvaged goods. Fantastic. Back up to the cockpit, and we'll go again. Oh, wrong door. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of people will crew up for salvage because the second person can be down there moving the boxes around as they come out, which means that the salvage person in the cockpit is just focused on pretty much constantly stripping the hull. So it's a lot, a lot more efficient when you've got a second person, especially once you've got into some of the larger ships like 
the Reclaimer. So this is the Vulture, which is the small, uh, smaller salvage ship. The Reclaimer is obviously absolutely massive, big reclaiming claw on the front, and suddenly that box work becomes a lot more valuable in, in a ship like that. Now there will be people that will comment here on the technique that I'm using. This might not be the most efficient way. Um, certainly a lot of the time I'm not getting much if any materials and I'm not really at the 100% yield very much. But I'm kind of watching the hull disintegrate in front of me and I think this is where I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I'm like wanting to get every single <laughs> little drop. Given that the cost for this claim was what? 20,000 alpha UEC, um, I feel like I want to get as, as much as I think that I can reasonably from that. So I apologize if my less efficient method is offensive to you in some way, but this is uh, me satisfying my own, my own mindset of scraping as much of this as I can. And there we are, filling station ejecting. So I usually stop when this is happening. I don't know whether you need to. Someone can maybe let me know in the comments if I'm doing the right thing by stopping the beam when those boxes are being ejected or if I can just keep going and it will automatically start filling up the next one. But I'll also because of the way that I'm doing this here with fill a box, let it come out, fill the second box, wait for that to be full and then hop out. Maybe it's a sensible precaution to do anyway. There is something satisfying about kind of watching this whole disintegrate in front of your eyes. It's hard to explain, like I really enjoy the mining gameplay loop, but I can see why people are drawn to salvage, because I don't know, it's just very satisfying to watch. should probably mention here, um, again in terms of getting the most out of these salvage claims, this is a Valkyrie which is obviously a combat ship and it does have a fair number of weapons attached to it. What you will often see when people are out salvaging is that they'll actually head out to the ship itself and collect those weapons, use the tractor beam, grab them off the ship, put them on your ship and then be able to take that away and sell that to one of the weapon shops in the verse. It is a really good way of being able to get a little bit more from the salvage experience because suddenly you're also selling off these weapons, not for a full price, but still for a decent amount of money. I've actually not done that in this salvage trip and that's because this is one of the first times that I'm filling up a ship, filling up like a ship like the Valkyrie with this vulture and so I wasn't sure how many cargo boxes I was going to use up by doing that so I wanted to keep the valuable cargo space in the back free for the scrap because the scrap invariably for the space it takes up seems to be a bit more valuable as we hop down and move another one of these crates and the 3.19 servers aren't the most responsive so sometimes it takes a couple of minutes I'm definitely a fan of these kind of snap to the cargo grid experiences. I remember a time of manually moving boxes around and it's it's a bit of a pain, so having them snap to the grid is definitely helpful. So yes, ordinarily you would expect people to load up on the weapons from the ship as well, that's quite a common thing, especially if you have a cargo hauler with you, a friend with a cargo ship, that would be a very normal thing to do. So I'm sorry again if it offends you that I've left those weapons on this ship for now. So you can see here the 
front section of the Valkyrie is kind of highlighted in yellow, and that yellow kind of denotes how much material is left on that particular part. So now it's the wing, it's highlighted yellow because about half of the stuff, and it's just gone to red. The red signifies that actually most of the harvestable, harvestables on there now are salvaged away in, in the hold. So as you kind of make your way across the ship, you can very quickly at a glance be able to see right how much stuff is left on these different parts, what's worth me kind of collecting and what's not. And that corresponds to the um, right of the mining, mining salvage heads up display, which shows the remaining vehicle hole percentage. The highlighted color is linked to that. So it starts out blue when it's easy, free, there's loads of flows of vehicle hole left. Then it moves to yellow and then to red when there's maybe less than a third. It's quite hard to describe how satisfying this feels to be just kind of scraping away at the hull. I guess it's it's kind of like a paint by numbers type feeling. It's, it's really hard to explain, but it is genuinely very satisfying. If you've not yet tried it, I would highly recommend getting out, borrowing somebody's salvage ship and giving it a go. There's just something a calming or affirming about it. I don't know, maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about, or equally, let me know in the comments if you go, what on earth? So this seems to be my preferred method is kind of locking to the movement of the ship and then maneuvering the ship around the salvage target. You, depending on how you kind of fly, you might have more luck with just using the mouse. That's absolutely fine as well. Whatever works for you, I suppose. I really like the look of these ships as well, with all of the exposed mechanicry underneath. I suppose this is all kind of part and parcel of the damage model. I know I'm not getting anything there, I just wanted to make sure that I've picked this side clean before we traverse around and approach from another angle. this isn't the easiest to see with the sun shining from the left there but this is where the fact that some of the ships have headlights I find quite helpful because you're almost able to illuminate a little bit of what it is that you're doing that's true of the mining ships as well by the way I find that helpful so at this point looking at that cargo filling up the next SU of cargo storage. I think it's already dumped one out, so when we get this one full, probably need to pop down and deal with that. And there it says contract complete. That's just to say I've got enough of the salvage from this that the marker has kind of gone away. I suppose that's important to consider if you are salvaging something very large and it might take multiple trips to store all of the goods from it then you'd probably want to leave the contract running so that you still know where you're going to get back to the location move the next box across there. In that back part. So we're up to six boxes so far. That's not bad, that's not bad. I 
And I guess this is the big difference between going solo versus otherwise. Like I find myself constantly hopping out of the chair, moving down, organizing things and heading back up. Whereas when you're mining with a group, it's not really a consideration. just seeing that hole disintegrating. It is just satisfying, it is. Who knows, might be a minor turn salvager yet. And while I remember if you are enjoying watching away this salvage experience, I am trying to include more of these kind of pure gameplay videos in the channel. So if this is hitting the mark for you and you're enjoying kind of watching the salvage experience as it happens, please do just let me know that in the video comments. Press that like button maybe. It's really helpful for me to know actually what is it that people are enjoying watching the most on the channel. So however you want to let me know, I would appreciate that. Thank you. It's really interesting on some of the larger ships like this, seeing how all of the different elements of the ship have their own kind of salvage area. So, you know, that turret there versus the rear body of the ship versus you know, the little engine nacelles versus the winglets. It's really interesting to see how it's all, all put together. And of course the next logical stage of this for me is going to be this is a ship in pieces it's not gone well but logically if you can take the stuff from the ship what could you do to maybe fix it up and repair it i think regular viewers of the channel will know that kind of idea of repair and engineer gameplay i find very very exciting This is a great activity to be, I guess similar to mining, just sat with a coffee, drinking a cup of coffee and munching away at the hole. Very satisfying. Just manoeuvre the vulture around a little bit to be able to get in at this nacelle. got pretty much all of that little winglet and the hole there as well again this is the perfectionist in me wanting to get as much of this back aboard as I can do you know a lot of these modules you see the vehicle hull strength on the right for the modules and they're almost completely scraped you now this no cell 2% 1% I just want to, I want to have had a good go at, I don't need to get it perfect, but as much as I can easily get, take off that, it's good. And you can kind of use the heads up display on the bottom of the salvage HUD to work out where you should be looking. Honestly, I quite enjoy just doing it visually, seeing bits of the hole and what gets scraped versus doesn't get scraped. And I don't know if that's the correct terminology either. The salvagers can let me know. But 
But I do find that just, for me, approaching from multiple angles seems to do a decent job. It's down to 0% on that thruster there now. Just fly around the ship and try and just see if I can fill up this last this last SCU box if I can. There we go, there's that last box. So we'll head down and move that out. I'm hoping that this ship, the Drake Vulture, might be available for Alpha UEC come patch 3.2. I think if it does, I might spend a little bit more time with it. Maybe even do a review video for it. It is quite a nice ship to fly around with. There we got three, six, seven, and eight crates. I think the official storage for the uh, Vulture, i.e. on that cargo grid at the back, is up to 12. So eight is about two thirds of the way full, but Given that 12 is the official storage and this is Star Citizen, people have figured out ways that you can get more crates in the back. Um, it's a little bit too janky for my liking, so I'm, I'm happy to stick to the 8 or the 12, but for those who were really wanting to get the most out of this, you'll, you'll probably see from this video, a lot of the expense is in the travel time of getting to a salvage target, so the more that you're able to fill up on on salvage in a single go without having to go back and sell it the better that said i think we've got most of what we're going to get from that hole so we'll set a course to the nearest planetoid in our case that's going to be herson we'll head to lawville and sell up So I did mention in the introduction, some parts of the video have been sped up. That's in particular the quantum travel. We're heading back into quantum travel, so this is at times 12 speed, just because I thought that might make it a little bit less of a long video, and there's not that much that's too interesting about traveling through quantum travel these days. plant of Hurston approaches. So here I'm just going to orient the ship and try and find the Lawville city landing area. You can just set a route straight for Lawville and then it will be marked when you jump out of Quantum but because this has got quite a long cooldown on it um, and I need to wait for the cooldown to vanish anyway uh, it's it's a bit quicker just to be able to select the planet rather than select the planet then find Lawville and then I use my cooldown time to find Laurel, and there it is. Drive is now on. I do like that each of the planets in Star Citizen has had a relatively recent kind of graphics pass so most of them now have nice looking clouds and nice looking cities in fact i think all four of them do as a patch 319 anyway, i do find it a bit of a shame that quantum drive will quite happily when you're doing cross-planetary hop it will quite happily 
leave your ship upside down when you exit. I would much rather at least oriented itself to the horizon, but maybe that's just me. So at this point we'll head in to land uh, at Lorville, a teaser spaceport. Lorville is quite a nice city for working out where to land because the teaser spaceport has these this rectangle around it of little signs that say teaser spaceports. You can see them here just below the target indicator on the heads-up display. You can see there's kind of six of them laid out horizontally and then a couple vertically that kind of say this is going to be where the spaceport is. So I think of all of the different landing areas, Lorville is one of the easiest to be able to see where you're going, whether it's day or night. I do like the new, new Lorville as well, I do think it looks good. As we approach within range of air traffic control, we'll ask for a landing pad. Which is granted to us. And again, that just makes it easier because you get your heads-up display, which shows this is where you're going. And looking around and admiring the, the skyline. Skyline at night. Here you can see those TESA spaceports kind of holograms floating. They do make it easier. Take note please, New Babbage and Riker Memorial, August Dunlow. You could do this too. Landing gear down. Right, landing gear down. And then I'm just trying to control the speed on the way down. The Vulture is not the most responsive ship, so trying to find a balance between getting in there quickly and safely but also staying under control which I think I've I think I've got here into the hangar bay bring the nose back up to the horizon down to land landing complete engines off interestingly for geometric enthusiasts out there, I often try to land from corner to corner of the landing pads, so landing diagonally rather than straight on or perpendicular, and that's just because for longer ships it gives you just a little bit more room. Some arithmetic mathematics involved in that I'm sure, where kind of the length from corner to corner is longer than the is it Pythagoras? I don't know. I can't remember. Here we are. Quick look back at the Drake Vulture. Quite a nice looking industrial ship actually. And then we'll make our way to sell up. So for selling the salvaged goods it's just a regular trade console. So in this case we'll be going to the central business di district. If you did also pick up things like weapons then you need to go to the relevant shop for those things so like selling weapons you go to your center mass something like that not much going on in lawville today happy with that to the central business district onwards I do like the look of the central business district with all the kind of gold and marble I mean you'll see it shortly I suppose but it's kind of that opulent side of Lawville the corporate corporate riches versus the industrial slumlands that seems like it's the rest of the city on the metro so once again sped up the footage here so that you don't have to watch the metro making its way in and we'll hop out there we are that's the golden marble that I was talking about just looks good
So I appreciate this wasn't the highest profit margin salvage trip. I think end to end, if you take out the kind of sped up quantum travel journeys, it was about 43 minutes in total. And for the eight crates that we brought back, that's about, well, it's about 62k Alpha UEC, but then it was 20k for the salvage right. So a profit of 42. It would have been more if we'd have brought the weapons back and sold the weapons. But it kind of shows that this wasn't the most efficient of mining trips. There are much better runs out there. And especially if you're able to fill up on all the other stuff and have a cargo ship with you, you can maximize those profits a lot better. Still, that was quite an enjoyable experience for me getting out solo mining. So 62,000 credits back into the bank. Processing the order. And I hope you enjoyed watching this a little bit different back to some sort of standard gameplay. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this, but otherwise, and as ever, thank you for watching.